Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to be diving back into the Blender Bridge for plasticity. Now, in the last video, we talked more about what it was and how to set it up and how to use it just in general. In this video, we're going to dive deeper into some of the options for things like marking seams and UV unwrapping. So just a quick reminder, we are an affiliate for Plasticity. So if you use the code LEAD10 at checkout, you'll get 10% off either the indie or the studio version. And it also does help out the channel. So if you are looking to purchase, make sure that you do use that code to get 10% off. So if you haven't seen it already, make sure you check out the first video where we did talk about how to set it up and use it. And in this video, we're going to do a little bit more of a deeper dive. Now, if you do have the indie or studio version and you want to follow along, Get started by having a cube in plasticity. We're gonna round the edges. We're gonna hit O on the top face. And then we're gonna pull that in just to make some basic geometry. Nothing really complex here. And then we're gonna hop into Blender. I'm using Blender 4.0. There is 4.1 out, but for right now, I'm gonna stick with 4.0. Hit N on the keyboard, navigate to your plasticity tab, make sure it's connected. And then we're gonna refresh. Now, a lot of times when you're doing UV unwrapping, you need to be mindful of the scale of your object. Because we are dealing with an object that came in from plasticity through the Blender Bridge at scale one to one, we don't really have any worries about the distortion that you would see if you were to, say, scale something up in the object mode rather than in edit mode. So we don't have to worry about that step, but again, this is really not gonna be a deep dive into UV unwrapping, but we're just looking at the options in the software. Now you'll notice at first, a lot of the options are grayed out. And part of that is because we're not in edit mode. We have to hit tab to go into edit mode, and then we can begin to see some of these options. Now they're gonna make more sense if we're in the UV editing space so we can see the unwrap on the left-hand side. And I'm gonna go ahead and drag this over and zoom into my object and bring up my plasticity tab again. So when we're over here, when an object like this comes in from a CAD program like Plasticity, this BREP gets converted to tries, bunch of triangles. This is not necessarily how you would model it in Blender. So we are going to talk about doing a refacet to an NGON based model, but we want to take a look at it in this try configuration first. Now there are a couple of things that we should mention, and we're going to have to do some backtracking in this video. So just make sure that you're prepared. First, I want to make note of our selection manager and the numbers one, two, and three across the top of our keyboard. We're going to be jumping back and forth between face selection and edge selection. So make sure that you are at least comfortable doing that. And I want to start by showing you the first way, if you're going to do some manual seams on your object, how you should approach it. So we're going to select a face. In this case, it's one of these triangles inside. And I'm gonna use the Select Plasticity Edges. Now it might be hard to see, but if we zoom in, there's a slight orange highlight on that edge. Then I'm gonna hit U for my UV mapping menu and mark seam. That's gonna give me a nice red edge there. And I'm gonna repeat the process going around the top. Now, if you're not sure what's gonna get selected, you can always use the Select Plasticity Faces first. That'll give you a good idea of where it's going to make those selections. And then we can use Select Plasticity Edges, U, and Mark Seam. We also do have the option to paint Plasticity Faces, which you're not gonna see unless you go into your Material Preview or if you go into the Rendered Preview. Now, this is essentially what Plasticity is going to be doing. When you select a face, and you say select edges or faces from the plasticity model. So for example, on this brown face here, if I say select edges, it's going to give me the edge around those two triangles. So while it does work in some instances, like on the bottom here, we can use that, hit U and mark seam. It's not going to work everywhere. I'm gonna to switch to my edge selection mode and I'm gonna add a seam here and I'm gonna add a seam on the inside here. Then I'm gonna select all you again and unwrap. So this is the first iteration of unwrapping this object. And this is a combination of using the select plasticity faces and edges, also painting it so you understand what's getting selected, and then using the U key for our UV menu and marking the seam. Now there are other ways that we can do this. There is an auto mark edges option, but I found that using the auto mark edges does a pretty good job in most cases. However, when you start to manually mark your seams, 
you run into problems because we now have all of these red edges and these sort of teal edges. So also I'm gonna go into options and turn on live unwrap. And I'm gonna open up my UV menu and I'm gonna reset this. Then I'm gonna hit U on the keyboard and unwrap it. And you can see that the result is pretty much the same. But if we do a reset and clear all the seams, and you can see that the result is pretty much the same. Because of all of the auto marked edges that happens in the plasticity transition, you can see that a lot of these inside faces end up getting broken up into smaller segments. We got a large rectangle, and then we've got all of these separate little uh, fa the facets here for the filleted or the rounded corner. So basically what we're getting is these faces here are going to be the inside faces and the fillets in those sections. So that's just something to keep in mind when we use some of these automatic tools, that's what's happening. Now let's take a look at one last option with this before we take a look at the beta version of the utility and a couple of the extra options that pop up. So if I want to refacet this, basically take it from this basic triangulated imported model, we can come in and select NGON, may want to play around with your tolerance values. I'm going to take this all the way down and select refacet. Now this looks a bit more like what it would be if you were to model it in Blender. Now what I'm going to do here is go back to my face selection. Once again, I'm going to select that top face and note that if I use select plasticity faces, it's still grabbing the entire top. I'm going to select the edges, hit U on the keyboard and mark the seam. Now, the main reason I wanna do this is because again, I want some manual control over what's happening to those edges. So I'm gonna do the same thing here, mark these seams, go to my edge selection, and make sure that I mark at least a vertical seam on the inside and a vertical seam on the outside so we don't get a stretch. And I'm gonna unwrap it. So this looks like a pretty good result. The entire outside shows that we've got the four large faces and then all of the separate faces for those fillets. The inside face here looks pretty good, the bottom, the top, and then the inside again. Everything has been unwrapped pretty nicely. So now that we've seen how those basic features work, the next thing I'm gonna do is go into my add-ins menu, and I'm gonna search for plasticity, and I'm gonna take a look at the beta version of this. Now, the beta version has a couple of extra features that have popped up. Note that we have auto mark edges, merge UV seams, the plasticity faces, edges, and the paint plasticity faces. So that's basically what we would see with the current public release. Now we've got a couple of extra tools, select similar geometry, join selected and unjoin selected. Some of these tools are not directly related to UV unwrapping, but they work more in the modeling environment. So if you have a pattern of hardware, for example, on an object, you may want to select similar geometry. Now, the big thing that I do wanna mention here, because we're not looking at this from a modeling approach for those sort of tools in the middle, is that if we select the object, there's this open selected inside UV editor. This essentially pops up a second window where we could drag this to another screen and we could take a look at this sort of in a live preview. So that's a really nice option that has popped up in the newest beta release of this add-in, the Blender Bridge add-in. And again, all these other things here are really taking a look at modeling tools, so like selecting similar geometry. But that's pretty much all I wanted to cover in this video. If you are using Blender Bridge and you have a lot more skill and knowledge about UV unwrapping and shader and material editing and so on, you can probably do quite a bit by using this to help speed up that import coming from plasticity and bring those assets into Blender. If you have any questions on this, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. <music>